hi everyone welcome to this photoshop tutorial in this tutorial we are going to learn how to create a double exposure effect using photoshop so as you can see i already have photoshop opened so what i will first do is open up the image i want to work with so in my case i have the image of a model already i'm going to put the link on where to download the image in the description of the video below so you can access it and practice, and practice with it as well so first of all you go to open and i will select the image i want to use Alright, so the first thing we'll do is to make a selection of the model. So as you can see, the model is already on the background, the yellow background or some orange background. So we're going to extract the model onto a new onto a new layer. So what I want to the easiest way I love to do my selections is using the select menu and using select and use the subject. So it will just select the subject. And why I love using this is that it's easier to use when you have backgrounds that are not complicated when you have simple backgrounds rather than complex backgrounds in this case you can see that the image has a very simple background it's just a it's just an orange color at the background which is which is very good you can use for the sake of this tutorial so if you have photoshop cc version or other versions that has this option you can just go to select and come to subject then you allow photoshop to Try and determine the subject and make the selection. Okay, once the selection is done, I'll just use Ctrl J to copy the selection to a new layer. So now I have the selection copied to a new layer. If I had the original layer, you can see that we have a transparent background here, so which is good. Now I'll create a new layer under it using control and clicking on this new layer icon here. It will just create a new layer and I can just fill it with a black color for now so that we can see what we are working with. Using the paint bucket to just fill, fill the background. So now I'll I want the image to be black and white. There are several ways in Photoshop you can turn your image to black and white. You can use the adjustment layers and create an adjustment layer, then go to black and white, then just the image just turns black and white. You can clip it to the layer you want to work with. So it just turns black and white. I don't want to use this option. There are other options as well. You can still use the adjustment layer, use hue and saturation, and then saturate it all the way down so the image is now black and white you have taken away all the saturation the image is now black and white but still i don't want to use this one i'm just showing you so that you know that there are different ways to do one thing in photoshop there are various ways you can achieve one effect in photoshop my favorite way of doing it is using ctrl shift u which is the same as hue and saturation but this is just the shortcut key to desaturate the image but first of all i love to, i would like to copy the image make a copy of the image so i'll undo this process and make a copy of it then i'll apply the effect on the copy i made so Control shift u to desaturate it then i can work with this layer copy now i love to name my layer so i'll, I'll name this one model original and maybe model black and white so these are my layer this is more than i'm working with now so now what i want to do is to bring the image of the sky i want to 
used as a double exposure so i'll go to file place and place embedded so i'll just click on place embedded then i'll go and select the image i want to use i have this image right here here's this sky background i'll just place it so it, it will load okay, after it has loaded you can make some adjustments like increase the, the size so i want to increase it and I want to reduce your opacity to see how it will look like when I when I finally apply the apply the effect. So now I will reduce the size and I will rotate it a bit because I want I want the thing to look as if her her head is open while the sky while, while blending with the sky. So uh, it is good to reduce your opacity temporarily so that you see how the effect will look like in the end. So I think um, I'm okay with this effect like this. So I'll just click OK. Then I'll take back the opacity all the way up to 100. So that's the default opacity. So now you, you can see that our image is, it has been imported as a smart object. It's placed as a smart object. So I want to rasterize it. Then I will now make, I will now reselect my model the model in my background i want to reselect it so one way you can do that is just hold down your control key and click on the layer so it will make a selection of the model so now i want to mask this this layer this particular layer this sky background i want to mask it with to take the shape of this model so that i will later on use it to fake the double exposure so with this selected then clicking on your on your sky layer. Let me name let me name it sky so that it's easier. I love naming my layers so sky. So with with the sky with the model selected and your sky sky layer activated, then you just go to this mask icon and add a layer mask. So it will now mask it to the selection. So now I want to start. Using the, I want to start adding the effect, the illusion that is a double exposure. So what I what I will do is to pick up the brush tool and increase the size. You can increase the size using the open bracket tool to open it. So if you want to reduce it, you can just use the close bracket tool. So I love it. So you can just right click and select the size you want. But I love using the bracket tool. So I'll just open it a bit and then if you if your brush is set to foreground it will delete your this thing so see what i mean when i'm clearing now it is deleting but if i set it back to white if i toggle it to white the foreground is white now it will bring it back so this is what i mean so now i want to use the the white in these areas to open up the sky so that it will not be confined to the model alone so this is where i'm going to use the white this thing white or the white foreground color so that i'll open up the sky so here i'm opening it up here as well i want to open it all the way up and then i'll use the black to start clearing it back again now I want her face to be visible. Some parts of her face to be visible. So I'll clear here as well. You just experiment with it to see the effects you want. So I will bring some parts here. You can reduce the opacity as well so that it will not be very harsh. Like this. This looks good. Well, I'll, I'll clear this part. Let's make it. Yes, I love this effect. So 
for now you can see the effect is not appearing very good though it's looking a bit okay but it has not given that perfect illusion that this is a double exposure so what is making it so is the background we have a black we have a black background here let me name it background so we have a black background here and i will have to change the color to the same color as the sky so i will sample the sky color this then i will use my paint bucket to and fill the background with white so now you can see it's looking much better and you can zoom in as well because sometimes there might be imperfections you will not notice until you zoom in so when i zoom in i can see what i'm working with so i'll see click on the max one thing when you're working with a layer mask don't click on the original layer just click on the max when you click on the original layer see what i mean it will not affect anything but when you click on the layer mask it will that's when the effect will work so i still want to open up this part and open it up a bit and to reduce your opacity and you can use x x is a shortcut to toggle between foreground and background color but you see here when i use x it is just toggling the foreground and background color so i'll use x to toggle it and reduce the opacity and clean it up Tutorial, this is okay so what I love to do now is to add some few adjustments to the color because now the color is not looking more professional the way I want so what I want to do now is to add a gradient map that's one way I do my color grading there are there are instances or there are situations where you use gradient maps for for your color grading but I want to show you different ways of doing color grading or color correction so using the adjustment adjustment layer option you go to gradient map then you pick a gradient map to you see instantly the picture is now looking it's looking harmonic but not in a professional way because there is no contrast there's no contrast and the vibrance is not that much defined so using a gradient map you can just adjust the colors I want it to go from a darker shade of blue for example here yeah, a more darker blue then to a, to a more lighter shade of blue you can even set it to white or choose a blue color then just bring it to a lighter blue as well there are other presets here that you, you can use but this, these ones are there are crazy options you can use it to achieve crazy effects or what i want to use is just this option so let me just define my colors again a more darker blue to going from blue to white so that increases okay now this is one way to do color grading then you can adjust the blend modes for example if you want to, if you want to darken it you can use multiply if you, you can use color bond there are different options that you can achieve using your blend mode here 
but I don't want to use this option. There are instances, there are types of effect, there are types of effects you can use this gradient map, but I don't want to use the gradient map now. So what I will do is delete this. Delete this. Let me drag it and there's one thing I've not done. If you see in the original image I showed you, we have the text and the foreground here. So I didn't add that. So what we'll do now is to add the foreground. So I'll pick the gradient to then create a new layer and just fill the layer with this gradient tool. So the and in selecting the gradient tool, you you pick it a, a gradient that that goes from from blue to transparent so for example this is the color i want to use i'll sample the color of our background which is already selected here and i'll click ok then it is going to be transparent transparent and so this let me show you what i mean so if i drag from bottom to top here it is going from blue to transparent but this is the effect i want so i think i'm satisfied with this effect i'll just what I'll do now is to add our text. So the text, the text is on the original image is head above clouds. So let me quickly add it. We have head above. Set the color to white. Then quickly add clouds, cloud in is then adjust the lettering for canning so I'll set it to zero then select the font the font I use was let me see which font the Jacqueline I think yes this is the font the Jacqueline so I'll use this font and transform to transform something you can just Click on Ctrl T to transform, then you adjust it. I'll drag it all the way up, reduce the bit. So I'll transform this layer as well. Now to me the text looks more shouty, so I'll reduce the opacity. I don't want it to conflict with the, our model or our main our main subjects. So I'll just use it to maybe 70 or 60. I think 60. Okay. So now it's very fine to contrast. Text is not about shouting. It's not about taking the the subject. So now after everything, I'll match all my layers into one, into one. So I'll make a copy of it. So the easiest way to do this is using Control, Alt, Shift, and E. So when you hold down Control, Alt, Shift, E, to match everything down into one layer. So now we have this this here. So now we can work with this. So what I want to do is to go to the Filter, Camera Rock. And this is where I will do all my color correcting, like split tuning, selective color adjustments, and other things. So the first thing I will do is use the basic color adjustments, and then I will. What I want to do is add the contrast. I want to increase contrast and highlights as well. I want to add highlights more. Then go down to clarity. I want to Increase the clarity quite a bit. Then saturation and vibrance will leave it for now. We'll go to sharpening, which is you can find it under the detail. Then you can add sharpening to it to make the image more sharp. If I increase the amount, you can see that the image is more sharper. The 
is including the sharpness of the image which is good for this effect so we'll give the sharpening then we'll go to this hue saturation and luminous so you can come to the hue and adjust the colors this hey, from, for the aqua i want to take it to the more bluey side and even here too i want to adjust it so you can adjust it for example if you're adjusting it you see the color the blue color is changing it depends on the effect you want and the style the style you're going for so you can adjust it to your taste you can give it that pink or magenta or whatever you call it that tint you want so these are ways you can add color correcting to your color correction to your images so i think i'm okay here i don't want to go I don't want to go crazy so i'll just make a few adjustments come to the saturation so now the saturation for example this is the aquas now and the blues so you can to reduce the saturation of blue you can reduce it down so you can see anything that is blue in the in the photo is desaturated when you take it all the way up to increase the value of the blue so i don't want it like that I'm just I, will, I want to leave it normal so i will not play with this saturation menu i'll go to luminance and adjust some few sliders here okay come back to here Now go back here. Still add clarity to it, and then reduce the saturation. I don't want it to be so colorful. So reduce the saturation. Add vibrance to it. Okay. Just come back with the HSL adjustments and play with some sliders to see what works best go to luminance I think I'm okay with this effect because it okay, is split tony. I want to add some split tony to it. So I want to I want the model to have some some kind of bluish bluish tint to her body. So this is where split toning would work really well for me. And just play with everything to see what you want to see what you like increase the saturation okay. it's okay yes i think like this so now we have a more balanced effect here okay. i'm okay with this go back to sharpening sharpening again this is just optional i'm doing it to my own taste you can do it to your own taste so if you are okay with the first step you can just say what you want this is based on individual preferences so i'll come back to basic and decrease the saturation again it's more okay so i think i'm okay click okay so now you can see a big difference if i toggle this is before this is after this is before and after so you can see the difference so it's good to to color grade your image after doing your after doing everything so i think if 
if i'm not mistaken we have come to the end of this tutorial so if you have any questions feel free to drop them on the comment section below and you can dm me as well i reply to messages so you can dm me and if you if you have any tutorial in mind if you have any effect you see somewhere you want me to recreate it you want me to create a tutorial just send me a dm with the effect and i i hope i can do that I'll, if i can do it i'll, I'll create a video for it so with this we have come to the end of the tutorial take care and keep creating bye